Hey everyone, Genome here. Just come at you with a uh, kind of a walkthrough of my current arcade that I got going on in the basement downstairs. So without further ado, let's go ahead and just get into it. I have quite a few uh, cabinets now, and it's kind of a more recent thing I've been doing. But I'll just kind of take you through most of my newer ones, and you know, you know how it goes. Anyway, uh, here's my newest purchase: is the At Games Legends um, machine. Pretty amazing uh, device right now, especially if you go add a CoinOps X, which gives you thousands and thousands of games. Incredible value, great system. I'm gonna do a review of each of these machines, so this is gonna be a baseline uh, kind of review of, of the all machines, not, not nothing in, in depth. This used to be my old Beatles like <laughs> station right here, so I left the guitars up, but yeah. So I haven't really done any upgrades to this one yet. Uh, there's not a whole lot I wanna do to it, but maybe a few things later on. Uh, next to it is my T2 cab. Uh, no mods yet, but I do have a uh, LED button kit coming for it here in the next few days. And I definitely want to um, replace the washed out marquee that came with it. Um, and this big black area, I may put a lighted coin door down there. Probably will, uh, just for completion's sake. But uh, you can see the kind of the, the row over here. This is the, uh, speaking of, the only two things I bought new in here was this At Games Legend pinball and the Legends Ultimate, both my ad games. That's the only two things I bought new. Everything else here has been uh, usually through Marketplace. So this is the uh, Ad Games Legend Pinball. Haven't done anything to this one to modify it. Um, it's a multi-cade kind of thing, just like the, the Legends unit, but this one's for virtual pinball. So it's an amazing, amazing uh, thing. They do have the 4K that's coming out here shortly, so you might want to consider that if you're looking for, to scratch that digital pinball itch to just wait till I think December when the 4K comes out. I'm not sure how much more expensive it's going to be. This was just about seven, eight hundred bucks, something like that, with shipping, a hundred dollars shipping. So, uh, but I've already done a video on that, so we won't get that too much. Uh, I'll do this row here a little bit. Let me go over here. Uh, these two are actually my first two pickups uh, in the hobby. So over here we have, they're both the Legacy Machines. This is the Street Fighter II Legacy Machine, which has uh, a really good uh, assortment of games on it. Um, Twelve on each of these, and... Uh, I do like this cabinet quite a bit, other than the shortcomings of, you know, <laughs> the, the lip. Everyone knows about these. I'll do the in-depth, like I said, uh, later on them. And it's got the faux coin door, like, print on the front. So I will probably uh, put an actual coin door on there at some point. And the artwork on this one is not great. I know it's accurate, period accurate, but I don't like the, the big black area. It doesn't make no sense to me. So Mortal Kombat 2, I kept looks much better. Uh, I have done some mods to this one. I haven't done any mods to Street Fighter 2 cab other than putting some, you know, LEDs behind it. Um, now, the M MK2, I've done one thing, and I'm fixing to do another one to it. Uh, I did put the lighted button kit on here. And uh, I'm going to be putting a speaker system in here as well, like I've done to a few of my other cabs. So... I mean, it sounds okay, but nothing great, and... The good fighting games need uh, good volume. So, yeah. So, the Legacy Cabs, I got both of these for $200 each. So, I think I got a really good deal on them. They were barely used. Both had risers. There were no scuffs. So, good units. Uh, that's my little workstation I got going. I've been modding like crazy. All these things. Drilling. <laughs> rewiring. So, yeah. Stay tuned to that. And I'm going to show you some more of my mods. Before I do that, there will be a link in the description below for Do-It-Yourself Retro Arcade. Uh, that's where I've gotten just about everything I've done to modify these, uh, all these machines, and there's an affiliate link down there. So if you want to purchase any of these items, go ahead and use the link, click on the link below, and heck, I'll get some credit for it. So much appreciated if we do that. But nothing else, they're a great, great company to work with. I've talked with Shane several times on some of these upgrades, and he's been very, very fast to get back with you. So very pleasant experience and make it super easy. So let's go ahead and get over here to the next cabs. This is the Mix Pac-Man it's like the 12 in 1 or 14 in 1. I think it's actually 14 in 1 cab. This was a weird one. I think this is generation 2. I got it used like all the other ones. And it had some things that are like newer, right? It had the the live button. So it has the leaderboards on this one. And it had the molded coin doors. Now I installed the lighting kit behind it. Um, so we did that. And I do have a lighted button kit coming for this one. And I just recently added the light up marquee. This one did not have a light up marquee, so this is it was a weird. It's a weird cabinet, man. It had like some of the newer stuff on there, but a lot of like older leftover things. And it's got the more recessed um, 
marquee area. But I do like the uh, the black and the pink kind of look. Uh, I don't have a matching riser for this one. Most of my a lot of my risers are just generic ones, so I might get decals for them. But that's Miss Pac-Man. Uh, over here we have the Space Invaders. This is maybe my most heavily modified cab. It's an awful lot of work for a game with basically, or a thing with basically one game on it, Space Invaders. But it is what it is. Labors of love, right? Uh, obviously, the first thing, well, one of the first thing I did, I put a lighted marquee on there. Did not come with one. And um, I want to get some of the decal work that goes on the riser, but we ain't going to worry about that. Obviously, also, I put lighted buttons on here. And uh, the main thing that I, the first thing I did to it, and you'll hear it right here. Notice I said here is I put a potentiometer kit on there, which do-it-yourself retro rail crate also um, helpfully sells too for about $10 because on these generation one cabs, they were so ridiculously loud that I could not even have the volume on because it would pierce you. It was either piercingly loud. So I put a potentiometer on there and now it's bearably, it's still not as low as I like it to be, but it's much, much better and I can leave the sound on it. So, but it doesn't like auto cycle for um, like previews and like that. So you won't hear it. Uh, it just sits there quietly until you push play. But basically, it needed a lot uh, to bring it up stuff. I have been, and also put a new uh, joystick, a sound on there too, um, because the original one had a issue. I was trying to replace the spring inside with a four pound spring, and it has a C clamp in there that would not come out, a little like wafer clamp. And I was trying so hard to get it out there. I actually busted one of the circuit boards. I had to put a whole new <laughs> joystick. I have been in and out of this machine, I don't know how many times. Uh, but yes, that's the Space Invaders cab. So. Uh, okay, here's the Killer Instinct cab, and I've done quite a bit to this one as well. Um, you'll see I also put the lighted coin door kit in this one. And it's funny, because when I bought this, the, um, uh, this wasn't coming on, the light, the LED bar, right? I'm like, what's going on with this? Is it something wrong with it? So I, you know, took the back off of it, and I was looking around trying to chase it down. It wasn't even plugged in, so I don't know if when the person built it, they didn't know to plug it in, or they didn't want to. It looked like it ever had been plugged in, because it was still wired up or bound up you know so yeah <laughs> i got it now uh, i'm not gonna do too much more to this i do want to get a new uh vinyl here like i do for the the legacy cabs over there too because of course it's got the washed out marquee uh rk one up is incapable of putting out too much quality uh but everything else i like the buttons and joysticks feel pretty good i can't remember if i put a four pound spring in here or not but anyway they feel good and responsive but my main thing that I've enjoyed now with adding on to this has been the speaker system. So I got a $30 uh, computer speaker kit, 18 watts, and just wired it in direct with a RCA and a splitter, and now it sounds incredible. And this is one of the best sounding arcade games of all time. Music, soundtrack, sound effects are just amazing. Yeah, I can shake the windows in here pretty well. I set it up on both of the ones with the speakers. I had a puck system on them so I could kind of control the additional speakers right here. I attached them on the outside. But, uh... a little bit of the sound here. Highly recommended uh, mod, and I will, if I remember, I'll put a link to the speakers I'm using. I know a lot of people say you use the Logitech's, but they're like 60 bucks. So for 30 bucks, I just this is plenty. 18 watts is good, and all you need is that and a an RCA splitter, and you're good to go. Super easy mod to do. Sounds great. Uh, next is maybe maybe my most modified cab. That's the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, does not have a coin door. I may put one on there and get a, a blank um, kick plate there. Even though it won't really match up too well with the riser, but it is what it is. Uh, this one did not have a lighted uh, marquee, so I just swapped in a new one. For once again, do it yourself retro arcade. 
a link in the description below, and a uh, lighted button kit uh, with color coordinated uh, turtle buttons, right? Okay, so I've done that. Uh, what else did I do to this thing? Inter externally, nothing else, but one of the main things I did do, like with the other ones, is I added speakers. Same kit as the other ones. And this is a great sounding game with some really iconic music and it deserves no less. So let's take a listen to the intro when it comes on here. It repeats a lot, so get used to hearing that if you have this in your arcade. And same thing, I have the uh, the puck up here attached. So, fun game with the group. Um, I definitely get the most mileage out of my Killer Instinct and my next cabinet. Um, and actually, the, the Mortal Kombat 2 Legacy cab, because I play like Ruby or Tapper all the time. But like I said, I'll do a more in-depth uh, individual uh, machine breakdown here in the future. And finally, I have my latest edition, the uh, Atari Star Wars cab. Three games on there. Uh, Star Wars, of course, Empire Strikes Back, and Return of the Jedi. Can't stand Return of the Jedi, but the other two games are great. Played a lot. This is actually the sit-down model. I actually found the sit-down model. Unfortunately, the house I got out of was a smoker's house, and I guess he kept pets inside, too. It just stunk to high heaven. I cleaned the machine inside and out, but I think because of the material on the seat, I cannot get the smell out of it, so I just put it out in the garage. I'm going to let it fumigate for a couple more weeks and see if it gets better, but if not... I just won't have the chair. Right now, I got it on a generic riser. This is definitely a first gen one because uh, it has the no, phone, no no coin door and it has like the the game lineup on the front. But the yoke feels great. Um, the only thing I've really done to this is I added speakers. Uh, once again, I actually have Star Wars pulled up. And these, this is actually not the kit that I normally use. This is just some computer speakers I hooked up to it with no subwoofer, but I'm going to add the subwoofer one eventually. Sorry, I'm trying to play this one-handed. Let's go to the Death Star. Come on. This sounds pretty good when it blows up. And I'm just going to dodge and use the force. It's like shooting womp rats back home. Oops. I used to play this game so much in the arcade. I'll do a whole other video on this. Luke, trust me. I hate the thought that. I don't see what you can do with it. Alright, we should be getting close to the run here. Yahoo! You're only clear, kid! <laughs> Love the vector graphics. Just love the gameplay. It's fun. I know it's primitive, but I just love it. So that's it. That is the Genome uh, Arcade right now. As it were, I have my eyes on several more machines, uh, but I'm going to wait till they either drop in price or someone selling something else I want. So I'm going to be adding some islands here in the middle uh, when the wall space fills up, and I may move the futon that's over there out and maybe even the TV out there and put more machines in here. So I want to fill it up down here eventually and just make it a great little uh, home arcade in my finished basement. So, anyway, let me know what you think. Um, let me know what additions you'd like to see in here. Eventually, I'll be getting a lot more of them, and uh, hope you enjoy this little walkthrough. There'll be more, like I said, there'll be uh, an actual uh, rundown of each machine here shortly, whether I think it's a good deal or not, even on the used market. So, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, stay tuned for more content from uh, the home arcade, and until next time, this is Genome, just reliving his 80s dreams once again. Out.